Hi there and welcome to my 14 tutorial on C++ 2010 Express Edition and in this tutorial I'm going to talk about Math Library in which I'm going, to, I'm going to show you a couple of functions this library contains as well as Random Number Generator. So let's just start with the uh, Math Library. The Math Library allows us to calculate things like square root of a number or cosine or sine and many more things and that the functions of the class can, of the library can do. And of course I'm not going to show you all of them and because it will require more time and I don't want to waste it. And so uh, if you want to know all of them, I have a written tutorial on my web page. You can download it, I'll just open it and and read it through. There's a table with all those functions the math library contains and with the definitions so you can just have a look and if you need any of them they're, they're available for you on my page okay so first of all let's start with the um, library include so I will include the library math.h so this is the library we will use and I'm going to show you just a couple of examples uh, as I said just not waste some time and so bear with me I will write a small program and then I will explain everything to you okay and then two and then I will say number equals point zero let's say and then n2 equals cosine let's say and number Let me just copy this couple of times and I will change the names of the functions. This will be sine h, let's say. This one exponential. This one is Okay, so that's the program done. Now to explain it to you, I will just simply go through it and tell you what it what each thing does. And so basically I create a variable double it has to be double or probably a float as well could be valid I, I don't know I didn't use floats and um, but it has to be a double and um, or float potentially and um, but it can't be a integer as the functions and uh, the math functions with, wouldn't work so they require double uh, even it says uh, in the bracket it has to be a double so basically use a double each time you use those functions and um, the next statement is basically assign a to number so nothing serious going on here and the next statement is the third line uh, here and it's n2 equals cosine of number so cosine is basically a trigonometric function and it calculates some kind of angle I, I'm not sure um, if you need the definition just go to Wikipedia I have some of the definitions but not this one Okay, then I will simply print out this number, this result, and the next statement is, again, I assign uh, to n to sine h, and which is basically a hyperbolic function, and uh, it's a hyperbolic sine um, of the number, and I have a definition for that, and it goes, hyperbolic functions are analogs of the ordinary trigonometric, or uh, circular uh, functions. The source is Wikipedia. I took it from Wikipedia. If you if you want to check it, if you want to have more information about this, go to Wikipedia. Type in uh, hip, uh, hyperbolic functions, and you should get your answer. And again, I will print it out, and go to next statement. So this one is assigning exponential function to uh, the result of exponential function to n two. Um, and an exponential function is a function whose values is a constant rise to the power of the argument especially a function where the constant is e so that's the definition of the exponential function and um, i have a couple of web pages and um, but also you can find this on wikipedia so no, nowhere um, that you have to go to find the definition of this one <coughs> And the last one is a basically square root function. So it will calculate the square root um, of this number, of this variable, and assign it to n2. The square root, I have a definition for square root if you want to. 
a number that produces a specific quantity when multiplied by itself. For example, 6 is the square root of uh, 36. Again, this can be found at Wikipedia, so nowhere far you have to go to find all of those. And so just let me just show you a output of the program and then we will move on. So that's the output. So basically all those will calculate the number which is inside here in the function and save it in num2 and two sorry and print it out. So basically nothing serious to to you know uh, worry about. It's pretty simple. You just have to remember those names uh, of the functions and you can use them anytime. So that will that will conclude the math library a uh, kind of short uh, but uh, it's useful if you create a program which does require some kind of mathematical um, you know, uh, calculations of such, like a call sign or sign, a uh, hyperbolic sign and stuff like this. So you know where to find it now and you can use it anytime. Okay, so let's move on to random number gen generator. Um, and this will need at least one library for this to work and optionally you can use two libraries. I will show you with two libraries and one later on. So first I will include, include the uh, standard uh, C standard library. And this is, oh sorry, um, C standard library have more than random generator of numbers uh, and functions, but I will not go through. I will not go through all of them because we don't need to. Uh, I'm just going to show you how the um, a random generator works. Um, but it has more uh, functions and such. And so, if you want to find out, I suggest you have to, you know, look for it. Uh, I, I don't have those information right now. Um, nevertheless, we can also optionally use a timer function. Time function. And it's include include time dot h so we can use it or we we don't need to actually uh, it's optional you can use it but it's like an optional uh, without it it will still work so it's up to you if if you include it okay so how to create a random number so first of all we have to uh, initialize the uh, random generator of the numbers uh, which is the function srand srand goes first we have to initialize it and you say in the bracket you specify unsigned integer and um, you can say anything zero whatever it is or you can say something like this time null that's it and it will still work or instead you can just simply say zero here and uh, don't use the time at all and it will still work so it's up to you if you want to use the time or not uh, as I said it's up to you to create a simple uh, you know a random number we will of course need some kind of variable so integer it works with integers and with doubles and with bytes whatever you want um, integer let's say number and that's it and then we just say number equals and rand which will generate the uh, random number and in the bracket we don't specify anything we just uh, simply leave it as it is or we can add a percentage like so and specify the range of the randomized number so basically you can specify the range or just leave it as it is and it will create uh, the range which the variable has so if the variable has for example from minus uh, 64,000 to plus 64,000 it will create a range from those. It will create a number from those from this range. Or you can specify, for example, say 10, and it will only create numbers from 0 to 9, and uh, because it counts from 0. I will show you a trick how to do it from 1 to 10 in a minute. And let me just first print it out. See out and number and and line. I will just um, copy this and paste it a couple of times so you will see the number is really randomizing itself and so as you see nine one zero three so it's random and I have no um, way to predict what type of number it is but uh, as I said you can do a little trick and um, because it was from zero to nine you cannot get ten if you do something like this but if you do the small trick something like this plus one each time 
and you get a number it will be added to one so you can get zero and when you get nine you get ten so basically it's a trick like and you will get at least one or maximum ten you can um, also do one more trick uh, which is setting the range not from zero but for example from 40 to 50 let's say which goes like this um, 50 for example and should produce a range between 40 and and so it should be plus I think and 50 yeah actually um yeah it, it does work some kind of this way and um, I'm not familiar with this one actually but you can do something like this it will create a range between um oh I remember now um it will this will be the least number 50 and plus 40 so up to 40 so up to 90 it will be the range if I change it to 10 for example it will be up to 60 then so that would be the range uh, 59 well basically and um, but nevertheless this is how the randomization of the numbers works of course you can use it for um, I don't know um, inside the loops you can use it for as instead of user input because user input should be as a you know random you cannot predict what type of uh, number user will input so you can use this one to simulate the user input you can use it for many things as I said you just randomize the number and then you can use it the variable as you would normally do and this pretty much concludes the tutorial uh, for the randomization of numbers and math and uh, I don't know uh, if you if you as I said if you need more information about this you can check my web page there is a tutorial written one about this there's lots of more information and so you can just get um, more knowledge out of this tutorial and this is just to show you how this works and um, okay this this is the the end of this tutorial as always visit my web page and YouTube channel uh, if you like my videos subscribe on videos or channel and um, there's still more tutorials to come so visit soon and I will see you in my next tutorial take care and bye